place this morning. That same damper is in this place this morning. There are some of you that are battling with that very ideology right. Well, I'm doing pretty good. And I'm seeing some, I'm, I'm getting here and I'm getting here. But the truth of the matter is, you may be here, but you want to be over there. And the word of the Lord. The, the word of the Lord has come to you in the night time. And said, be not afraid. But speak. And hold not thy peace. Oh. oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Sometimes I preach and the silence makes me scared. And then sometimes I preach like right now. And I don't care if you can hear a pin drop. You need to receive what thus saith the word of the Lord. Give me the next verse. For I am with thee and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. <laughs> now we have to understand the King James Version the punctuation was not in the original okay the punctuation was put in for us to understand it okay let's read for I am with thee and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee for I have much people in this city is everybody with me right now if you're on Facebook, you need to be, when it says what's on your mind, you need to put on there. Brother GL is preaching it down this morning. <laughs> yeah, I said it. I'll be looking for it this afternoon. <laughs> for I'm with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. Somebody tell me what you think that really what you think that passage means. Okay, since nobody wants to tell you, I'll tell you what I've always, until last night, I've always thought it meant. Don't be afraid. Don't hold your peace. But speak it. For I'm with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. Now that's how I've always read it. Meaning, I'm telling you, Go ahead and preach. Go ahead and say what you got to say. Because I got a lot of, whole lot of folks in this city that got your back. That ain't what that means. Brother Mark, I know sometimes it's that I throw y'all curveballs. But can you back up one verse for me? To verse number 9. Then spake the Lord. Now you got, you got to be quick, ready to go to ten. Because if you ain't quick, we'll have to do it all over again. I'm just teasing. I lost my handkerchief. I'm going to need it. Here. Oh, Lord Jesus. This will change your life. I'm telling you, what I'm about to share with you will change your life. Oh, God. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. Now for you to understand this, what I said while I go, that the word of the Lord has come to you in the night. He ain't saying to you, be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. That's not what the Lord's saying to you. That ain't your problem. That was Paul's problem. Can I get an amen? amen. Then spake the Lord in the Paul, to Paul in the night by vision. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. There we go. For I am with thee. not afraid but speak and hold not thy peace for I am with thee the much people got nothing to do with be not afraid and hold thy peace 
for no man shall sit on thee to hurt thee. The protector doesn't come from the people. The protection comes from the Lord. The reason for the protection mercy. Be not afraid, for I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. The protection comes from the Lord. If God be for us, if God be for us, who can be against us? I know y'all ain't sissies. We got to stop responding. If God be for us, who can be against us? Come on, man, you got to receive this. I ain't even got to the good part yet, but if you don't receive this, we understand. Do you understand the picture I painted for you? I hope I've done a good job. If I hadn't, please don't let me know. Paul showed up in Corinth not feeling the victory, but in weakness and fear and much trembling. He saw a little bit of, of, of progress. And then the Lord came to him in the night and said, Don't be afraid. Speak. Hold not thy peace. For I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. I'm not near done. Sunday school teachers are going to hate me today. For I have much people in this city. Is there anybody that's got it? (laughs) Don't you all stop worrying about man. Stop worrying about all these junk that you're battling with, you poor little old pitiful thing. I called you on that road. I called you to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. There ain't nobody going to hurt you when you're doing the work of the Lord. Oh, they might hurt you here, and they might hurt you here, but they can't hurt you in here where it counts. Nobody's going to hurt you. Because you see, you're all down in the mouth about the people. The ones that won't listen to you. Be not afraid. Think about this. Be not afraid. Hold not thy peace, but speak. What's Paul been saying when he's by himself? Don't nobody want to hear it. Ain't nobody interested. Ain't nobody like me. I must be a terrible preacher. Nobody wants it. And the Lord said, quit being a wimp. Quit being a sissy. Quit being a crybaby. Because I'm with you. You don't understand, Paul. This mission's bigger than you. This mission's bigger than you. It ain't about you feeling good about yourself. It ain't about you being happy. It ain't about you thinking that, you know, wake up in the morning or lay in the bed and I say, I preached a pretty good message today. It's about reaching people and changing people's lives because I have much people in this city and I can't afford for you to keep wallowing in your the quagmire of self-pity. I can't afford for you to keep wallowing and nobody hates me. Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. I've got a work for you to do. The population of Corinth, and there's a message in this too, was around 200,000 people at the height of its prosperity, with about 500,000 slaves. Somebody do the math. Don't make no sense. The gist of the message to Paul is stop thinking that you're going to keep going from place to place to place. I've got a work for you to do, and it's right here. Why? 
because I have much people in this city. You have to understand this. This is what you've got to understand. The people who have been here for the last four and a half years have heard me preach on, from Corinthians and on Corinth more than once. But the city that the Lord just said, I have much people in this city. When looked at, everybody say Corinth. Now we ain't talking about Mississippi, we're talking about Greece. Corinth was a city of vice like no other city. As a matter of fact, there was an insult or a byword that was used during these days for somebody that had no morals, that had no that had no moral compass, that, that lived a complete unfettered life. If they said they, they were to live like a Corinthian. It was a city of wealth and luxury and immorality, characterized by wild living, wild spending, wild playing, and a strong emphasis on sexuality. The temple had over a thousand priestesses who were actually prostitutes. They were paying homage to the goddess of love, Aphrodite. They were getting up on the altar and committing fornication and adultery and calling it worship. <laughs> it was a immoral, despicable, ungodly, and unholy place. Surely, see if you catch this, surely the rivers of Damascus, Abana, and Far Far are better than the river Jordan. It's nasty. It's dirty. It's ugly. Think about just for a minute the lens through which Paul is... God have mercy. Lord Jesus have mercy. The lens through which Paul is looking at Corinth does not paint a pretty picture. It is a, 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 a city full, full of every type of sin that you can think of. It was into this this tornado, this whirlwind, this maelstrom of delighting the devil that the Lord spoke these words to Paul. Be not afraid. Hold not thy peace, but speak, for I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have... Everybody say, I have... much people in this city which is a proclamation of authority and power. you got to think about something. When the Lord speaks, I said when the Lord speaks, let there be light and there was light. 2 Timothy 2 and 19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are His. 1 Corinthians 2 and 5 and I'm coming to a close you come to the music honey that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man remember when I told you the voice of the Lord that comes to you in the night time is not telling you to speak don't be afraid and don't hold your peace for I'm with you he's saying whatever you're battling with whatever your issue is it's personal it's personal. And just like the Bible, the Word of God is not saying to you today that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man. It's saying that your faith should not hinge upon people. Your faith should not depend on how good your life is going. Your faith should not stand in people. But it stands in the power of God. Paul, what the Lord did, Brother David, 
into the life of Paul as he spoke the word of faith. I have much people in this city. I can't I can't afford for you to be afraid. I can't afford to you to be defeated. I can't afford for you to act like that you got nobody in the whole world. Because a couple of few people, maybe ten. Think about that. The people you come in contact with every day, maybe ten of them upset you. But somehow they've got the power to beat us down until we're laying up in a ball with our legs shaking, beat down, defeated. And the word of the Lord came to you in the nighttime. I know it's Sunday morning, but in the spiritual realm, there's some of you that are in the nighttime. And the word of the Lord has come to you and said, you cannot stay in your mess. Because I'm with you. I'm with you. I... Paul is now sharing with the Corinthian church what he himself had received from God. The Lord said, you're here. Because I want you here. You're here because you belong to God. It doesn't matter what your reality says. It does not matter what your reality says. Paul's reality said, how in the world am I going to reach this crazy place? The Holy Ghost has said, I have much people in this city. <laughs> You're saying, it can't happen. There's no way. And then I, I really don't want to take a sidetrack right now. But then you try to prove that to yourself every day. By continuing to give in to the flesh. I just will give in. I just will lie. I just will connive. I just will cheat. I just will go get a shot of this or go get a shot of that. Because I've done messed this all up anyway. Your faith cannot stand in the wisdom of men. It doesn't matter what your reality says. It doesn't matter what somebody else speaks into your life about reality. It's His reality that we must cling to. Our faith must stand in the power of God. And when that happens, He can beat that iron skillet into a clock. He can fry himself every egg that every chicken has ever laid. Them kids cannot mind. They can lie. They can sneak out. They can do all kinds of crazy stuff. But you'll still be standing. I said you'll still be standing. Because your faith it was Paul that said your faith can't be in the wisdom of man. Remember, they were elevating man over the message. They were elevating Apollos. They were elevating Paul. They were even elevating Jesus Christ, who was the man Jesus Christ. You have to understand that. And Paul's telling them, you can't elevate wisdom and put your faith in man's wisdom. You can't. That's why you can't put your, your faith in man's failures or successes. That's why, and, and, and this, is, this is about as political as I'm going to get, but if you're a Holy Ghost filled child of God, you can't vote with your pocketbook. Your faith cannot, oh, if we get such and such for a president, we're gone. Really? Really? Huh? Who's in control here? I heard somebody uh, Friday talking about the British pulled out of the, the European Union. And they already said, for three years, we're all going to be broke now. He might be broke, but my father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He's large and in charge. The only ones of you right now that look and at me like I lost my mind is because you want your faith to stay in man. Because for so long, you've been able to, to justify falling short because somebody hurt your feelings in 1922.
I feel it when the spirit of Jerry gets in here. Knock him out, John. It won't be long. Oh, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm so hoping that you'll let go. Let go of your fear. Let go of your uncertainty. Let go of your bitterness. Oh, there's some of you that I see it in my mind. I see it in my mind as you lift your hands toward God Almighty. And I watch that rust and that dust and that grime go off of you into the drain of forgetfulness as the blood of Jesus washes you from so much junk that you put in other people. Brother McKinney, none of Paul's problems had anything to do with the Lord. Brother Pete, not one problem. You never find him saying anything. Even, think about Elijah. Think about Elijah. He said, everybody's left me. I'm all by myself. Why don't you take me? He wasn't wanting away from God. God wasn't a problem. People were the problem. I believe it's Proverbs 9 and 14, I think. It says, somebody received this this morning. It ain't in my notes. And it may be 14 and 9, but it's in there. It says, where no oxen are, the crib is clean. But great is the increase by the strength of the ox. Yes, there are going to be men, people, that are going to be tools of the devil to try to bring you down. And if your faith is in man, even yourself, your faith cannot be in yourself. It can't be in your own ability. It can't be in your own strength, your own talent. The Bible says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. You want to know why you keep failing? Because you keep trying to do it yourself. It ain't never God that's failed. Stand with me.